top advisor to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, Igor Zhovka, is with us. Uh, Igor, thanks for taking the time tonight. We heard President Zelensky say today that 2023 will be the year of our victory. You are also hearing, though, American and Western leaders who are talking about bracing for this war to drag on potentially for years. Do you have any frustration that those leaders seem to doubt the ability of Ukraine to make good on what Zelensky is promising to wrap this up in 2023? You know, I remember some leaders uh, or experts, so-called, uh, were saying uh, exactly a year ago that uh, Ukraine will not withstand more than three, okay, let's say five, okay, seven days, two weeks. Now we have uh, 366 days of war. Not only Ukraine withstand it, not only we, we managed to, to, to withstand the aggressor, but managed to fight back. And almost 50% of Ukrainian territory, which was captured after the open aggression, has been already released. We will be doing this this year, definitely. Our aim, our will, that's what really President is saying, to have happy, victorious 2023. But in order to get this, we need the support. And we need the support in terms of weapon, first of all, because Ukraine can start counteroffensive only with having enough supply of artillery, including the long-range artillery, with enough ammunition, uh, battle tanks and armored vehicles, enough air defense to protect the skies and the territory of Ukraine. Provided that we have it, we will definitely, we have all the possibilities to win. We have the will and the courage of Ukrainian armed forces. We have the will and strength of our president. We have the will and desire of Ukrainian people. So in order not to speculate about the length, let's unite all the efforts of the international community to help Ukraine to win. Exactly I do want to say, year. President Biden did just say something about those F-16s. Uh, you talked about defending from the air. Uh, we're trying to turn that around so we can get that so folks can see that uh, and we can get a response from you to that. So I just want to let people know that's coming up. I do want to ask you, Ukraine's military intelligence chief says that this spring is going to bring decisive battles. Give us a sense of what is in store here in the coming weeks and months. Well, you know, Russia will be definitely trying to to have a revenge because throughout the last half a year, Russia was only failing on the on the battlefield, on the ground, uh, didn't manage to get any any major cities or towns. Uh, that's why they will be really intensive. That's what they really are already on the east of Ukraine, around the city of Bakhmut and Kremlin. They will be trying to have some offensive from the south of Ukraine. And we have to understand that this will definitely happen. But when they fail, not if, but when they fail, we will definitely have the counteroffensive because this revenge would be the last uh, Russian revenge possible. They're also running out of not even the manpower because they have enough manpower, but then the standing somehow why and for what purpose they are doing. So definitely Ukraine should not lose the momentum. It should dwell upon this very positive dynamics we had in the second half of uh, uh, the last year. So definitely spring will be difficult for us. But Igor, when, when we will start the counteroffensive, it will be much easier. Igor, I do want to listen now to what President Biden just said. These are remarks just released by ABC News. Uh, he said that the U.S. is providing what Ukraine needs now, but this is what he said about F-16s. We know the Germans are now sending tanks in after the U.S. said it would send Abrams tanks as well. But we know President Zelensky continues to say what he really needs are F-16s. Will you send F-16s? Look, we're sending him what our seasoned military thinks he needs now. He needs tanks. He needs artillery. He needs air defense, including another HIMAR. There's things he needs now that we're sending him to put him in a position to be able to make gains this spring and this summer going into the fall. You don't think he needs F-16s now? No, he doesn't need F-16s now. Is that a never? Look, first of all, the idea that we know exactly what's going to be needed a year, two, three from now, but there is no basis upon which there is a rationale, according to our military now, to provide F-16s. But you're not ruling it out? I am ruling it out for now. For now. Igor, he says Ukraine doesn't need F-16s now. What is your reaction to that? 
My reaction is, uh, if we got the F-16s now, there will be no pilots to, to fly them because our pilots have to be trained be well before we obtain the F-16s. And this is what exactly Ukraine has started to achieve already. Several, several countries uh, announced that they will be ready to, get, to give trainings for Ukrainian pilots to master the F-16s. So we will be training. We will be going on with our counteroffensive. We will be looking forward to delivering F-16. And by the way, not only F-16, there are some other types of fighter jets in the European countries as well, which can also be provided to Ukraine. You know, someone told that there will be no possibility to have long artillery systems to Ukraine Western time. Now we have them. Uh, I mean, Igor, no, no, Igor no though, let me ask you, tests. easier, Igor makes, more sense. Igor makes more sense to train for a plane that you definitely know you're going to get. And right now he's ruling it out. You know, if you train the F-16 play and the country spends money for training your soldiers for F-16, why on earth this country will spend money if the F-16 will never be delivered to Ukraine?